So, Diana said it's free. I'd ask that my uh, my prayers not just be ritual, but be your heart. Mm -hmm. Transform us, O oh Lord, so we can live mm -hmm. like you want us to live in a crazy, stupid, fallen world. Have your way, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. <laughs> Good morning, all. Welcome with us. We are um, we're in Matthew chapter 19. Um, and as you all know, there's 28 chapters in Matthew. So what's happening is happening. And it's a happening transition. It, um, we're, we're in the new, I don't know, some people call this the second half of Matthew. And so we'll see how all that runs. Hmm. So he departs from Galilee and goes to Judea. So it, it's a kind, and he's made this journey before, of course, but this is kind of a symbolic uh, journey toward the triumphant entry. And, uh -huh. okay. So verse one. Yep. Matthew 19, one in the Christian standard version, Christian standard Bible version. When Jesus had left, had finished saying these things, he departed from Galilee, went to the region of Judea, crossed the Jordan. That's interesting because the Jordan, uh, the Jordan River runs north, south, and Judea is north of uh, Jerusalem, south of the Galilee. So how do you cross? Well, okay, so we must have been on the east side. Yeah. Anyway, okay, uh, large crowds followed him, and he healed them there. Some okay. Pharisees. So yeah. just to comment that. Uh, the locations of healing happened all over the place. <laughs> he had healings okay. here, he had healings there. He had feeding money, people here and there. I mean, it's not like, you know, let's go to a holy place and get this done. Just wherever Jesus is, is a holy place. And wherever Jesus is, it gets done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Kath. Welcome, welcome. Morning. Uh, verse 3, some Pharisees approached him to test him. They asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife on any grounds? So um, we think about these guys showing up and there's a crowd around Jesus and they say, we're going to put him down in front of his followers. Um, and one of the commentators was talking that there was two, two Jewish thinkings about divorce Sure, divorce anybody any time or only for adultery. So he was, they were pretty well convinced that if they, if Jesus said this thing, that this part of the crowd would turn against him. If he said that thing, the other part of the crowd would turn against him. Um, they thought it was a perfect test. Yeah. Well, they, yeah, two schools of thought, just like today, liberal and conservative. Yeah. But they'll use them, well, they're thinking of the law, and Jesus is the, the law. Okay. So Jesus is the spirit that gave them the law. That's so right. they're trying to outwit the <laughs> law giver. Mm -hmm. So good luck. Mm -hmm. Good luck. So um, I've told the story before, but in light of that, I've had a, I have one of the teachers that I that I started to follow when I first saved, and he's a Greek scholar and brilliant. And he uh, and these two cult guys came up to him and said, "Well, we're Greek scholars, and uh, you're not." So let me teach you what the Greek says. They say to this guy, he goes, oh. So he brings out his textbook for first year Greek students and he asks them to read a passage and they can't. And he says, well, so what you're saying this passage says, it does not say, and you're not Greek experts and they never came back to see him. <laughs> so here we have, here we have the Pharisees, you'd think the Pharisees had learned because they repeatedly have tried to trap him. And you can just imagine they're, they're huddling together. Okay, now what can we ask them? Because mm -hmm. they spend all their time debating about the fine points yeah. of the law. Yeah, and among now, themselves. We'll, we'll, we'll get them on this. We'll yeah. get them on the, gold, on the coin for Caesar. We'll get them on, okay, we got this crowd in front of him. We're going to take him down this time. There's going to be no... It's going to be booze. Yeah. It's going to be booze and they're going to stoke him. It's yeah. going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're imagining. Yeah. So is it lawful to divorce a woman on any grounds? Okay. 
Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Haven't you read, he replied, that he who created them in the beginning made them male and female. And, and he also and said... And we have the DNA to prove that. Males <laughs> are male by DNA. Well, yeah. we were talking before we started. There's a unique yeah, period in history <laughs> where it's all inversed. And 20 years in the past, 20 years from now, nobody will argue about these things. We're in a very special place in history where you can argue about this stuff. Yeah. 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 But that doesn't mean that it's arguable. Yeah. It just means that we are lost. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it's all... I mean, the you words, can't you really can't stuff. say it's words publicly right. as to what this really is so what of, uh, today what, that we're going, we're going yeah. through today. One of, one of uh, Andy's buddies says to me, well, I have a Barnstable High School education, and I can tell the difference between a man and a woman. <laughs> That's a tuck, huh? <laughs> 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 I dropped out and I'm lost. I can't tell one from another. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's ridiculous. It's so far I mean, beyond ridiculous. It's hysterical and it's also treacherous. Tragic. I mean, because they're pretending to be blind. Yes. They're pretending, and it's very, a very deep, deep act. It, yeah. it goes to the core of what's wrong with us. P pathetic tragedy. Yeah, it is. So a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. What an interesting picture marriage has in the scriptures as far as Christ and the church, and some of that, some of that is really uncomfortable in our American mindset that Christ is the husband and the church is the wife. And but uh, the picture of this is um, so we had a we had a teaching to my students on uh, on intimacy and how every time you're intimate with somebody it, it's like two pieces of paper that are glued together and when you separate some of that is still left there and so and obviously Christ can forgive and give you a new start but but being casual about that leaves a leaves a impact on your life and until you come to Christ that affects your future relationships as well. So go become one and and it's a funny picture too because the the Jewish wedding like the the bride and the groom were betrothed, they were ready to be married and now the thing that they needed was a place to live so that the son built an addition on his family's house until it was good enough for the father of the son to say, okay, now, now you can get married and moved in here. Because the, because the son on his own would want to put two, two by fours together and say, okay, it's done. Mm. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. Mm. And then when the, when the father approves, the, the groom would go and, and they would have the wedding celebration. And so you think about how amazing that is, but here Jesus is reteaching what the really the spirit of the law is and was so they're no longer two but one flesh what god has joined together and no one separate and this is the this is the because we go from the personal to the cosmic yes and i mean we can argue about what you want to do and you want to marry a dog yeah. but do you want to live in a world where everybody marries a dog <laughs> that goes down the droops quick what you want to be is the guy who marries a dog and everybody loves you and accepts you and everybody else has a nice monogamous relationship that they worked on t with each other. And so society is this like bulletproof gold chain. You know? <laughs> and every child that comes out of these unions is perfectly loved and perfectly ready to take up the, the life and in the, in the in citizenship. So that's this is what is what this is what God wants the world to be. It's never going to be a hundred percent like this, yeah, but sure. this is what the best world looks like. And can you amplify this, please, Rich? Amplified version, please. Verse four. No. Yep. And we understand that when the Amplified writes, and he, he uh, and they capitalize the letters. It's an Old Testament quote. God created the male and female. That's an Old Testament quote. And this reason, a, le a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined inseparably to his wife, and the two shall become one mm -hmm. flesh. So Old Testament quotes, they're trying to trap him on the Old Testament, but like Matt just said, he wrote the Old Testament. <laughs> he, 
he knows. Right. There it is. They no longer should be two, but one flesh. Therefore, God is joined together. Let no one separate. And the Pharisee said, seven. Okay. Mm, yeah. Verse seven. The Pharisee said to him, why then did Moses command us to give her a certificate of divorce and send her away? I, uh, well, and we're going to find out that it's not really a command. Yes. He said to them, because your hearts were hard and stubborn, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives. It's a permit, not a command. Yes. Okay. I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, except for sexual immorality, and marries another, uh, another woman, commits adultery. Yes. So, so we say, uh, every time we read something that firm, we say, well, well, what about this exception or that? Two exceptions in the New Testament. The uh, Old Testament thing is quoted twice by Jesus and twice by Paul. But the other exception is the if a, if a believer if two unbelievers are married and one of them becomes a believer the believer can't leave the unbeliever the unbeliever can leave the believer and so you just think okay and then we think about all of the troubles that people have with um, with brutality and stuff there's protections in the scripture for for the for the one that's brutalized usually the wife um, but but that's not what these Pharisees are asking. They're asking the trap question, can we trap Jesus into saying this thing or that thing? Hmm. And instead, he reaffirms the family. And the family unit, like Matt just said, the family unit is really the cornerstone of every society. If your family unit is crumbling, your society is crumbling. Hmm. And if you can't, because, and when we look at how, how uh, magnificent the Jewish family is, that they survived 1900 years without a temple. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when, when the conquering kings would come into an area, they would conquer the area and scatter not only the Jews, but the everybody. Mm -hmm. So, and then they would give- They'd actually relocate them elsewhere. That's right, that's right. <laughs> On purpose, relocate them and then relocate other people into, into their, their turn. place. Yeah. So when you come back home, the Samaritans are living in your, in your house. You just right. think, Hello. Hello. What incredible power that is and how how amazing it is that they kept their culture together mm -hmm. and they kept their culture together because they kept their families together. Amen. And so. <laughs> um, so what. What are you saying to, to the Lord Jesus here? And what is he saying about marriage? And the answer is he's saying that he's dead serious about marriage, so to speak. That he that is the foundation of a society that is the core of religion and hope and the promise marriage matters mm -hmm. now yep on to 10 yep the disciple said to jesus if the relationship of a man with his wife is like this it's better not to marry <laughs> well that's that's not at all what he was saying. No. He wasn't saying that yeah. marriage and it is an insufferable institution. Mm. He was saying marriage is the reality of our society. Now, if some are not called to be married, that's fine and, and whatever. But um, so the disciples take this to say the disciples say this now, not the uh, Pharisees. Oh. Yeah, it's better not to marry. If it's, it's almost, yeah, it's almost cynical. Maybe yeah. it is definitely cynical. It depends, depends who reads this. I, I think it is. Yeah. Cynical. I think God is, he solves problems, right? He solved the, all the problems. But still, there's some stuff that's not great. And, and marriage and sex, is it's just too powerful. Mm -hmm. yeah. This it, It's the generation of the new generation. It's a critical thing and it has to be done. Yeah. Otherwise, there's nothing. Mm -hmm. right. So it... It must be very, I don't know, you're, it's dead. Yeah, this is real tricky business. And then it's tricky business. <laughs> and we see that Paul never married, but Peter did. And mm -hmm. Peter had, and Peter actually took his wife on the uh, mission tours with him. So, um, but, the, but the enormity of the sanctity of marriage just 
mm. knocks the disciples like back. Mm. Okay, maybe it's better we don't do that at all then. Yeah. No, mm. that's not what he's saying. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's not. Yeah, that's not cynicism. That's that's uh, just uh, a um, an overweighted conclusion. There you go. No, and that's he goes the eunuchs for Christ, mm -hmm. and he reveals the class of people that are capable of being eunuchs for Christ. That's right. Mm -hmm. And Paul is an example. That's and right. one thing about Paul is that the guy's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> he's just nuts, dude. Like he's so devoted. Yeah. He sees he's super. There's nothing in his life but Christ. Yeah. And that's what you have to be to be a eunuch for Christ. You were kind of like consumed with it. Sure, that's right. And. Uh, so, so much to talk about tomorrow. <laughs> okay, so summation is that the Lord Jesus is concerned about marriage, and he doesn't want it to be a casual thing. Oh, there's no, no scripture basis for trial marriages or any of that kind of thing. And when I do premarital counseling, it's how does God want you to change the world being enhanced by being with this person? All of a sudden, that's so much better an answer than he's cute or she's cute. I mean, <laughs> cuteness comes and, and goes. I, um, I, I shared that story of, uh, you know, when, my first question is, well, there's 7 billion people on the planet. Uh, why this one? And the answer is, sh she's cute. Uh, <laughs> it's just not. And so I shared that with- Isn't that one cute? That one's cute too. <laughs> yeah. Cuteness is a common feature. You are very discerning and so, very picky. So I'm talking to this guy and his wife's standing behind him and, and she's listening in. And he goes, cuteness passes. And she goes, what? <laughs> <laughs> like she she took it that, that he had commented that her cuteness had passed, oh. that she was no longer beautiful. And it was really hilarious because oh. the more you try and backpedal out of that, well, it just doesn't. It it, it, it it just cracked me up that she reacted like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there was no, it was no, no maliciousness on his part. That obviously they love each other and they've grown in love and more and more. But uh, mm. if cuteness is the basis of your relationship, you're in real trouble. <laughs> but, Lord, we thank you for the marriages and we thank you for the sanctity of life. And we would ask that we would be that we would be prayerful of the marriages around us, oh Lord, and that you would be continue to work through us in wherever situation we're in. Transform us, oh Lord, and let us let us know what you consider holy is indeed holy. Bring blessing to us this day in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Yes, thank you again, Lord, for this instruction. Then how pertinent it is today and all that we deal with uh, that we may have a um, a clear understanding of how it is scripted from the beginning yes. and that we can see uh, the plan and uh, the outworkings of it uh, and the uh, significance of the entire uh, uh, purpose that you have for us we thank you for it and we pray for your continued anointing and direction your spirit that we might live lives that glorify you in yeshua's name amen uh, <clears throat> i don't know thank you lord again for your infinite brilliance that you can work us and you can actually save us <laughs> yes. it, it, it's just amazing the, the the trouble that we get into the 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 depths and the the heights and that's just the, how we get can so confused, how we turn uh, upside into downside and left into right and darkness into light. I mean, such people, such people we are, uh, but we are redeemable and thank you for redeeming us. And thank you for, you know, we your sacrifice yes. and your, your ascension to heaven. It, yes. it just, it makes everything so clear. <laughs> if we but listen to you, if we but sit down at your feet and listen to your and open yeah. our hearts yeah. then the world begins to fall into place and everything makes sense and we we live under god's love yeah. and we can almost forget about god's consternation frustration anger and and hair pulling that i'm sure went into the production of this wonderful world we live in in jesus name i pray yeah. amen. amen 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 blessings to y'all bye-bye
Ooh, here we are. This is the more of the Bible you read. You're just like, God, man, like, 